How you doing guys? Welcome back. What I'm going to do in the next 5 to 10 minutes is show you how to make a bushcrafty whisk out of the top of your Christmas tree. You can make big ones like this massive one here, big balloon whisk, or you can make little cute ones. Uh, the things that you're going to need to make this is uh, a set of decent gloves. So I've got my very bushcrafty yellow gloves, just a Swiss army knife, and the top of a Christmas tree. Um, also what you need is some sort of string, you can use natural cordage, uh, what I've got up here is a few different types of strings, so I've got some um, wax thread which I think works quite well. Uh, if you want to make it um, a bit more substantial so you can actually use it, then um, also a bit of wood glue wouldn't go amiss as well. So let's get straight into the construction of it. What I'm going to do first is with my gloves take off all of these pine needles, which can be quite tedious, but it is a necessary step. If you are wearing thick gloves, what you can do is run your fingers and thumb right the length down the opposite way the, the needles are growing, and that will help to take them all off in a fell swoop, as you can see there. Now we have our bare branches, or bare fronds, and this, as you can probably see now, is how the whisk is gonna take its shape. What we're going to do is we can tease these now <clears throat> into that shape and because this still has the, the, the sap in it, they're still quite flexible as you can see there and that's what we want to take advantage of when we come to shaping them into a whisk shape like that. What I'm not doing is, is breaking the branches, it's like an ACMR thing. You can hear the stickiness of the, the resin but I'm not breaking the branch, I'm just... Right, what I'm going to do now is with my sasami knife I'm going to really carefully um, shave these, <clears throat> shave all the bark off these branches because the bark is where all the bacteria live and we don't really want that when we're whisking stuff. That'll leave us with just the nice light sapwood um, that's underneath. So let's get going with that. Part of the reason I like Swiss Army knives for things like this over uh, the classic bushcrafty knife is that Swiss Army knives are legal in the UK wherever you go. Unless you're a real idiot with them, you can't really get them taken off you. But also for little jobs like this, they're perfect. The blades are nice and thin, you can get them razor sharp, and uh, they're all you need really for, for a task like this. The Swiss Army knife I'm using here is the camping one and you can see it's got two blades on it but it's got this one little blade I'm using here and that's really good for, because it is so small and thin, for getting into those tight, tight corners there. It's similar to a Mora 106 which is the small carving knife which uh, which quite a few people have got. Um, because the blade's so, so small it's, it's ideal for getting in all those little nooks and crannies in there. Um, I've sharpened this with my work sharp uh, and it does a really good job of getting it super, super razor thin and um, taking off these more difficult pieces of bark it, it, it helps them just ping off which is ideal. What I'm doing here using a chest lever grip is just taking off the bottom of the whisk just just getting that notch down nice and flat because I'm working so closely to my hand there I've, I've kept my glove on uh, partly to stop myself getting cut obviously but also um, the, the, the whisk itself is still quite covered in uh, sap so it keeps my hand from being super sticky. This next step is using the knife at 90 degrees to the wood and scraping away that green inner bark. What that will do is will expose just the beige part of the wood on the inside. Time spent doing this to get rid of all that greenery isn't wasted, it will give you a really professional looking whisk at the end. Well that's all the greenery off and you can see now we have got a few of these little hairy bits on. Just go around and pick those off. Once it's completed I'll probably go around and just really get uh, OCD with it, really get pernickety and get all those off. But what we need to do now is measure the shortest um, arm or frond or whatever you want to call it uh, and cut the rest to match because <clears throat> when we come to stick them on, sorry, when we come to position them we want, we want them all to be the same size. On those arms now, I'm just going to give it a flat edge so I get good contact on contact when I come to offer it up onto the main frond on the middle. 
A small amount of wood glue here will help just to secure it all in place. I'm just going to begin my tying on of the string with a simple clove hitch and that's going to go on one of the thicker thicker branches which I've got there and it's going to get sec secured lower down. I'm going to pull that nice and tight and the wax on that thread will help to stick it in place. What I'm going to do now is try and stick all of these down at the same time. I'm just going to begin by offering up the fronds to see where I want them to finally sit and that looks about right there. What you need is about 15 hands when you're doing this because it's so fiddly but what I've got is a bit of sellotape there which I'm going to struggle to put on uh, just to help me just as an extra set of fingers. And just moving on to the final fronds there, always the most difficult to get that stuck in place and then using the sellotape again just to hold it down while I come around with the string to, uh, to secure it all in place. All the arms are in the position I want them to be in now, so I'm going to go around with the piece of string and get that pulled nice and tight the whole way around. Like I said at the start, the good thing about this wax thread is that the wax on it will begin to almost sort of like melt together uh, and stick together itself. So it really does lend itself really well to this particular task. I'm um, putting it on nice and tight there and then I'm going to finish with a simple overhand knot just to, just to finish off the piece of string. Finally, I'm going to cut away that sellotape. The string secures all of the arms or fronds of the whisk in place, so the sellotape is no longer needed. Um, it's a bit of a fiddly task, but it's not too bad with a sasami knife. Well, there we have it, the finished product itself. What you need to do now is let, these, let this season. You do that by placing it somewhere where the temperature is constant, so not your house because the, the heating comes on and off, so the house gets hotter and colder, and that will lead to the whisk itself splitting. If it does split, you'll notice it in the bottom more often than not. It'll get a big crack in, uh, and then you can't use it, which is a bit of a shame. If you want to get these really, really pretty, you can give it a sand uh, now and when it's seasoned again to make it really nice and smooth. Um, but that is it, your finished bushcraft whisk. So thanks very much for watching, um, hope you enjoyed that one. If you give it a bash or if you've made a whisk before, then please drop me a message in the comments and let me know how it's gone. Um, but please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.